Greetings once again from the corner on the deck. Boy, it's been a while since we've been out here. But you know, for those of you who follow my videos, you know that I'm all done with the step-by-step -step restoration of antique radios. Now, I've done so many of them, there's nothing else to show. I've stated this uh, when I decided to stop doing it, and there's a thousand other guys out there doing it anyway. So it's not like, you know, there's not enough information. There's plenty. The things I've already done, if you just follow those videos, you should be able to fix just about any radio. Anyway, since we're no longer doing those kinds of videos, uh, that doesn't mean we're completely out of the radio side of the house. Brendan and I have decided to come up. Now, Brendan, is, for those of you who don't follow my videos, Brendan is my electronics mentor. He has been an electronics genius, as far as I'm concerned, since the age of 16. He lives up in the Detroit area. And he's been my electronics mentor uh, on many, many occasions, on many, many things that I needed help on. You know, in this kind of a business, uh, of a hobby, unless you're just really good at everything, you, you need a little help from time to time. And in my case, sometimes I needed a lot of help. And you got to have a mentor around to help you out, okay? Someone you can call upon. Someone you can gripe at, you know, when things aren't going so good. <laughs> just a sounding board, if nothing else. Anyway, now that we're done with the step-by-step, -step, I spoke with Brendan and we came up with the idea that maybe we could do a different type of series. It may, and we're getting ready to start. This is the first video in that series, as a matter of fact. It uh, may only be five videos long. It may only be three videos long. It may be 50 videos long. I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see. Uh, it'll be as long as it takes. And it involves things that I ran into when I first started repairing radios. Many of you new to the hobby are experiencing it right now. One of our uh, good subscribers, Art Hollingsworth, is going through uh, a period right now where he has a radio. He's completely restored, but it doesn't work. He's getting all kinds of oscillations, things like that. And, you know, the question is, what is causing this stuff? You know, I know he's pulling his hair out, and uh, he's, he's just driving him crazy. So... I had the same problem. Everybody knew the hobby has the same problem. Even the old timers have the same problem. What is causing this? But for me, when I first started out, it was like, gee, you know, okay, can I, can I put an alligator clip here? And, you know, a gator wire? Can I gator wire between these two points? What's going to happen? Am I going to get sparks? Is it going to blow up? Am I going to ruin something? You know, can I take a capacitor and jump across this point right here? Will, will I ruin something? I don't know. And you know, things of like, what's causing that motor boating? Where's that coming from? What could possibly be the cause? Well, those are the kinds of things that drive new guys, uh, a newbie, what we call newbies, that drives us nuts. So, Brendan and I came up with the idea that maybe if we took a good radio, you know, and kind of showed a few of these things, these bad things, and uh, kind of gave folks an idea of what, what caused it. So, i, I tell you what, maybe I, I just don't need to really go into a whole lot more of, uh, of an explanation. Let's just go ahead and, and plunge into the new series. I welcome everybody aboard. Let's break it. We are ready to go. I have removed everything non-essential like the uh, the clock and the plastic cabinet for this radio leaving just you know just our uh, chassis and our speaker everything's wired up I've got everything wired up here to where all I have to do is plug the radio in there'll be no on off switch I just plug it in and unplug it as needed keep in mind everything I tell you here has already been pretty much taught to me by my mentor Brendan some of it I knew some of it I did not however a good rehash never hurts anybody so we go over things sometimes 15 times you know to make sure we have a clear understanding and I say we I'm talking about me <laughs> you know Brendan clearly understands everything and uh, sometimes I'll, I'll I'll think I have what he's talking about then I'll say oh so this is the way it is that he'll say he'll write back and say no 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 you still don't quite have it <laughs> okay and then you know that generates another 55 questions and 55 answers until we finally get it I think we've made great progress uh, during the time we've been a team, and we have been a team, believe me. All right. What I was talking to you about earlier was 
gee, you know, if, if this if this if this resistor is bad and I put a different size resistor in there, how's that going to affect anything? You know, I always worried about that when I first started out. And this capacitor, you know, can I put a capacitor or can I jump a, a wire across here? Is that going to have anything? Will that wipe out my tube? Oh my goodness, I didn't really know happen. What happens if I don't have a 150 ohm resistor and all I have is uh, like 120? I get a lot of questions like that from people actually. Uh, uh, a lot of our subscribers, our young subscribers, they'll, they'll write and ask a question. They'll say, hey, look, uh, all I have is, uh, you know, 180 ohm, and this thing is supposed to be 150. Can I use the 180? Well, you know, if that's all you got, go ahead. It's not a problem. I, I, you know, the object is to get the radio going. You know, you can tweak and peek and put the right size resistors in at a later time. Just get the thing going. I mean, you can't go too excessive, you know, but, there, you know, you can you have a certain amount of leeway in these old radios. There's always a lot of leeway built into this old tube stuff, you know, plenty of tolerances. All right. We are going to start right here at the power cord. And we're going to work our way through the power supply section. Then we're going to wind up over here and just kind of work our way through, all the way through from the front end of the radio all the way to the speaker. And we're going to do things like open uh, certain components. We're going to short components. We're going to change values of certain components. We're going to disconnect certain components. By disconnect, that means sometimes I'm going to have to actually uh, cut the run. Just cut the run with my knife. Later on, I'll bridge it across with a wire. You know, this, this poor radio is going to get pretty butchered before we're done. This is our guinea pig. Our learner, our guinea pig. But when I'm done, it'll continue to play. And it will be repaired properly to where, you know, we can listen to it for many years to come. So don't worry about it. And even if I didn't, it's, a, you know, just a cheap old radio. But I hate to get rid of any radio that plays. <laughs> so let's go back to the beginning here. Let's come into the power cord. This, this uh, clock right here, this entire section right here is gone. So don't worry about that. That is gone. So essentially, we're coming in. And the first thing we run into is C5. Let me zoom in on that. We run into C5, which is connected from the power cord to ground. Well, what is the purpose of C5? And what happens if that thing shorts? What happens if that thing opens? How will that affect our rectifier tube right here? Matter of fact, how will that affect anything? You know, we, we need to know these things. This C5 is a, is a filter, is basically a filter capacitor and it's connected to the power cord if we have any spikes you know coming in any 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 static any spikes or anything this thing is designed to handle the majority of them it will handle the majority it'll send them to ground allowing the rest of the uh, power to come through and the tube to generate its uh you know its uh, rectified voltage and all that sort of thing and so we figured we'd start out by Disconnecting the ground here. What do you think will happen if we pull the ground? Suppose this, this this thing just quit working as if it you know the ground had been removed and the thing wasn't even there. What effect would that have? Well, I don't know. What do you say we find out? We're just gonna start right from the beginning. See, this is all for the newbies. Now, all you smart guys that have been around for fifty thousand years and know everything about electronics, find another video to watch. <laughs> it was this I don't want to go ex extremely deep on this, okay? We're just going to disconnect and let people see and hear what happens. All right, now that C5 turns out to be this yellow. Let me back up here a little bit. This yellow capacitor right here. That's what this C5 is. Now this end over here is the end to line. This end over here is the ground. So I'm going to be disconnected, pulling that. I'll be pulling that ground lead. I'll heat it with a soldering iron. And we'll just, you know, pull the lead up out of the board. Right now you're hearing a little bit of a buzzing and static, believe it or not, being caused by my little tiny Sony bloggy touch camera. It's amazing, isn't it? My camera's causing that. That's not there until I turn the camera on. That's the first time I've noticed that. Anyway, this capacitor C5 is now in the circuit and I have not removed, I have not removed the ground side of it. Well, let's go ahead and turn on our little Black & Decker rotary here and see what happens. It's plugged into the same power strip up here as the radio. There's the radio. There's the uh, rotary tool. Let's turn it on and see what happens.
what we're doing is generating static here and as you can see the uh, the capacitor tries to suppress all that by taking a lot of it to ground but there's just so much of it being generated by this at different frequencies that it it can't it can't really get rid of it all but it does a pretty good job uh, if you just normal static coming down the line you know not something like this of course I don't care what you hook up if it's anything like an electric drill or something like this or I don't know a toaster maybe a Sony bloggy touch camera <laughs> it will cause static to even that little cap can't handle let's go ahead now and disconnect the ground side of the cap and see if we can't uh, notice an increase in uh, the volume of the static and I, I think you will it probably won't be much but I, I think we're going to notice uh, an, an increase which basically tells you that yes we can run without this capacitor but it's going to uh, let much more noise come down the line and enter the rectifier and wind up in the B plus line and all sorts of all sorts of crazy stuff we do not want that static the ground lead has been removed from this capacitor you can see it right there. It's just kind of hanging in the air. So let's go ahead and fire up our uh, rotary tool again and see if there's an increase in static. And I think there's go you're going to hear quite a bit, not a whole lot, but there will be an increase. I mean, that capacitor can only, even when it's in circuit, can only handle so much. All right. What that proves is this... Uh, this radio will play without that capacitor even in the circuit right here and I'll prove it to you let's turn on the uh, turn up the volume I've got my transmitter going right now yeah, it's supposed to be here somewhere turn up the volume that might help One more thing I wanted to point out here before we get done. Uh, if you have a very, very strong radio station, close by, super strong, sometimes that radio station will override any static. Now here's my transmitter, which is right behind me, transmitting a pretty good signal. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn up the volume, we'll turn on the rotary, and see if there's any static comes out of the speaker. Now it's a pretty strong signal coming from my transmitter. Now we turn on the rotary. See? Nothing at all. So it can fool you from some, from time to time. Quite a while ago, someone came up with a bright idea that said, hey, look, you know, we really don't want these caps to short. It can cause a real problem with the power coming through, going straight to ground. If it's a, a circuit board, it can, you know, a printed circuit board, it can really mess up the runs. If it's wires, it can fry the wires. We, we just don't want this problem. It would be better to have a capacitor here that does not short. It's designed to open if it fails. So they came up with what one that does just that. It's called a safety capacitor. Now here's three different types of safety capacitors. Let me back up here just a tad. Both of these here are what they call Y2. Y2. Both of these are rated at 250 volts. This is a 0.0047. I think it's 0047. This one is a 0 0.047. Over here is an X2. The X2, this one here is a 0 0.05 microfarad rated at 275 volts. I could put the X2 in here. You're better off putting an X2 across there or an X1, I think it's an X1Y2. Let me see. A X, an X1Y2. Yeah, that's, you know, you could put either one of those here to ground get rid of that old wax capacitor and put these right here now this one here says 0 0.047 all I have is a 0 0.05 can we do that of course we can do that now you can learn all about safety capacitors by going to a website out there called justradios.com justradios.com they have a whole section of safety capacitors they tell you what they are and they tell you they just tell you all about it okay all right, this video is running a little longer than I wanted. I want these to be short videos, so we're going to go ahead and knock it off here. We're just going to show that one problem 
with our C5 that could happen. And you've now seen that, yeah, the radio will continue to play, but if the thing ever shorts, of course, it's going to wind up going straight to ground and fry a bunch of runs out on the back of the circuit board if, you're, you, know, if you have a radio like this. So uh, let me know what you think. Do you want to press on with this series? Uh, we'll just take it bit by bit. It'll probably be, you know, at least a few more videos long. And as we go, not only will you be learning, but so will I. We have a lot of things to disconnect, a lot of things to short, and a lot of runs to open up, things like that. Anyway, until next time, this is John.